Hello everyone, my name is Fox. This video is going to be super cool. All right, we're going to be talking about a new type of interface, which, well, new. It's been talked about for almost a decade now, but not many people have used it, and it's really been used more on server end than anything that we're used to. This is Oculink, and what it does is essentially similar to what Thunderbolt does with some few differences. Now, by and large, Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt 4, is still going to be the more convenient consumer friendly version to use because what Thunderbolt does is you will plug in this and typically on like an external GPU, you will also get power from this. So with this one cable, you can extend an eGPU and power a device as well. Now that is super convenient to have that available to you. The other thing that Thunderbolt does is it supports hot plugging far better than Oculink does. So with Thunderbolt, with the devices on, off or whatever, you can plug it in and take it out and the system will recover from ejecting the GPU in that way. Whereas Oculink, when you put it to sleep or disconnect it, sometimes it may not like that and will crash the system. So what I've been using this for is basically connecting this device and then powering on my machine. Now, this whole thing isn't easy. Now, I'm going to have a link on the GPD Discord below where you can try to buy all this stuff piecemeal yourself. There is a guy named uh, Hand Talker, which is on the GPD Discord, and I'll link it to him. You can talk to him. He's right now trying to coordinate like a mass buy for people to buy his one dock solution, which is actually a really elegant solution, and I really like it. This is his little M2 to Oculink adapter, and he also supplied me with the uh, 3D printed cover for the GPD Win Max 2. And what this allows is, like you can see, it's like super flush on the device itself, right? So when you hold it in your hand, it's totally fine, but you can actually just take the Oculink cable and plug it in. Now the Oculink cable, Oculink cable kind of looks like a DisplayPort cable. It's considerably smaller. Now this is the 4i version. They make an 8i version of Oculink cable, which is just eight internal lanes that are going across a cable versus 4i, four internal lanes on a cable. Now 8i is basically just double wide, so it's pretty simple to see. So this is going to be the far better solution, especially for mobile devices like the WinMax 2. And if there was going to be newer devices that were coming out, like a, a newer version of the GPU WinMax that could have Oculink on the edge. That's weird. That's something in my eye. Sorry about that. Anyway, there are clear benefits to having Oculink versus Thunderbolt. If you care a lot about performance and not being able to hot plug the device. So if you wanted to disconnect your device rapidly, you pretty much are going to have to fully power down your machine and then disconnect the Oculent cable so that you can then take your you know, device with you, in this case, the GPU Max 2. Whereas Thunderbolt, you could be charging and using the eGPU and then kind of just disconnect this and go about your way without having to do anything. So when we take a look at Thunderbolt 4, there still is the convenience. However, when we take a look at the benchmarks I'm going to show you in a moment, you can see why if we take a look, especially with 5 percentile and 1 percentile frames. And we'll talk more about that in one moment. I'm going to quickly show you the kind of eGPU solution that I have that uses Oculink. So this is kind of like a super mess. Now, this is just a standard old power supply. I just had one laying around, so I was just using that because I had it as spare. I didn't have to do anything. On the, on the eGPU side of things, if I can frame this right, you can see that we have a 24 pin connector right there, and that's really what gives the power to the board. And then, of course, you have your eight pin power plugs that are going to be on your PSU that you're going to have to go into the GPU side itself. So this is where all the magic happens. And then one of the things that you can see here, and I kind of show this in, in another video with these like switches with these particular switches in the, con the configuration that it is the GPU and max. When I power on the GPU and max, it will turn on the GPU automatically. I don't have to flip this switch to make it go on. I can just leave it like this. So the host in this instance, the GPU Max 2 is turning this enclosure on. And when I turn it off, it'll turn it off automatically. I don't have to do anything. So it makes it really convenient. However, that's only present on this particular adapter. This is the white M2 to Oculink adapter. And this one has the rails to send the signal to the host to power on or power off the external GPU. He has a purple one as well that doesn't have that. So you'd have to basically turn it on manually and turn it off manually, which is less convenient. So uh, right now to use Oculink on one of these devices is pretty inconvenient. OK, it's not convenient in any sense of the word. However, again, if you jump over to the GP Discord and you talk to Hand Talker, he's making a kit or trying to get a buy order from a large group of people to facilitate this. And he's doing it with the one dock. 
And the one dock itself is actually super elegant. Like in terms of all the types of like eGPU solutions that you have, this kind of displays the graphics card in a really nice manner and you can kind of just have it there. So that's kind of where things are right now. It's not that I anticipate a lot of people actually using Oculink. I think it's going to be exceedingly little people that are actually going to use Oculink at the current moment. I think this will get a little bit bigger as time goes on because it's super awesome. However, with Thunderbolt 5, that might squash this entirely as well because Thunderbolt 5 is going to shrink that gap. But right now with Oculink, it is really, really good. Uh, but there's caveats to it. And Thunderbolt's a lot more consumer friendly and easy to use. And it's easier to buy eGPU solutions with Thunderbolt. Without further ado, let's go ahead and start taking a look at benchmarks. OK, so up first, we're going to be taking a look at Cyberpunk 2077. This is running at 4K, but we're using the 4K Ultra ray tracing preset, basically the one all the way to the right. And I verify those settings. So you kind of go over through everything and kind of flip all the toggles because sometimes that can cause an issue. But once you correct that, this is what it is. So now there are a few things that I want you to kind of pay attention to. On the top is my 5900X. This is my desktop. So this is not an eGPU. This is a full desktop with a 3900, uh, 3090 that is undervolted. Right below that is the GPU Win Max 2 running AMD 6800U with the Oculink adapter over that to that eGPU enclosure with a 3080 with no undervolting. It's just default settings. Our averages are basically 1% difference. My 5 percentile is effectively 4%, and my 1 percentile is 9%. And this lines up with what other people have shown just by kind of shaving off PCIe lanes directly on a motherboard as well. So this is lining up there that Oculink really is, in all for all intents and purposes, PCIe 4.0 lanes and four of them across a wire. So it works on reasonably well to the point that when I'm using it, it feels alarmingly close to what my desktop is. The other two things that I want you to take a look at here are the bottom two. Now, this is Thunderbolt only running on the GPD Win Max 2. However, the one on the bottom is with it on the NVIDIA Profile Inspector tool having rebar enabled, basically the default settings. And as you can see, we actually have really, really poor performance. Our average is 36.5 FPS, and our one percentile goes down to 14 FPS. It looks really wild when we take a look at the frame graph. If we take a look at the frame graph, you can see how unreasonably spiky it gets all over the place. However, if we were to take a look at it with rebar off, now again, I had rebar on with a 3090 that was undervolted, and we're going to a 3080 here with rebar off. And you can see how big of a difference having rebar off going on Thunderbolt is. It is basically what you would anticipate for performance. So here's the part where it all kind of boils down to between Thunderbolt and Oculink. If we look at these two in the middle here, this is a 3080 with Thunderbolt and rebar off versus Oculink. And when we take a comparison between them, we're looking at a 29% difference on averages a 35% difference on 5 percentile and a 30% difference on 1 percentile. So if you were to kind of think about this in so far as if you had a 4090 and because we're taking a look at 3080 here and a 3080, both power settings the same, just the difference between Thunderbolt and Oculink, a 30% loss. If we were taking a look at like a 4090, especially how much a 4090 costs, if you were to say, oh, I lost 30% of the value of my 4090, that would suck. That would be really painful, which is why I kind of really like Oculink right now, because it gives me that performance that I'm looking for in terms of making my GPD Win Max 2 as a desktop replacement. I don't feel like I'm losing that much when I get all the versatility of having a mobile platform, but still having a GPU that is pretty worthwhile. So in this particular instance, we're going to go ahead and take a look at Metro, Metro Exodus. Now, on the 3090, this is, again, looking at my test from that I took a while ago, but this had rebar on. And that's where you're going to see a gigantic difference between Thunderbolt 3. Both Thunderbolt 3 rebar on versus rebar off. And the difference just from Thunderbolt 3 rebar on, rebar off, we're looking at a 50%, 48% increase on averages, a 35% increase on 5 percentile, and a 30% increase on 1 percentile. Both of these are just using Thunderbolt themselves. So turning off rebar is very much recommended if you're going to be running Thunderbolt on these devices. 100% go and get NVIDIA's Profile Inspector tool. Make sure you disable 
rebar for the game that you're playing because it's going to vastly improve performance for you. I really have to stress that part a lot here. But again, when we take a look at Oculink here, now this is still 3080 to 3080, so there's a little bit of a more fair comparison here. When we take a look at averages, when this is Metro Exodus, we're running at 4K resolution. It's using extreme settings with ray tracing and no DLSS on. So if we just take a look at the straight difference between Thunderbolt and Oculink, we're looking at a 25% increase by going to Oculink over Thunderbolt, a 38% increase on 5 percentile, and a 40% increase on 1 percentile. And last in the benchmark, we're going to take a look at Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is running DirectX 12, all highest settings, as high as I possibly can go, and this is what the results are. So at an average FPS increase, there's only 15% difference between the Thunderbolt 3 versus Oculink. However, our 5 percentile shows a 40% increase, and our 1 percentile shows a 50% increase. If we can back up here one second, I want to kind of just show you what this looks like from a frame time graph, just so you can kind of compare and visually see very quickly what's going on. So this is Metro Exodus that we're looking at. On the blue graph, you can see this is Thunderbolt with rebar on, which it defaults to. However, if you take a look at the green line, that is Thunderbolt with rebar disabled. So if you just take a look at the green and blue bar, you can see the massive difference between the two. Whereas if you take a look at the green and orange line, you can see that Oculink is clearly performing better across the board. But again, just kind of reinforcing here that you really need to disable rebar when running Thunderbolt to get the absolute best performance out of that. But Oculink is still going to give you that feeling that you're almost running on desktop. Uh, likewise, if we take a look at the frame time graph for Cyberpunk 2077, there are parts of the benchmark that is running where there introduces a lot of hitching. And that's where we get that really terrible 14 FPS, one percentile. Uh, and it, it's felt, it's quite noticeable between the two. For instance, in this one particular video, if I could just show you one part of it, where if you're running on Thunderbolt with rebar on the default and just moving your mouse around, you can see the noticeable stutters that are happening there. However, if we go ahead and disable rebar and go through the same exact scene and move the mouse around, those stutters are no longer present. So there are two things that I want to kind of communicate in this particular video. Number one is Oculink is really, really cool. I really love Oculink and I'm going to, for the most part, start switching over to using my GPU Max 2 and running with an Oculink eGPU solution as my main desktop. Number two is uh, even if you don't really care to go the Oculink route and you want to just stay with Thunderbolt, please, please, please use NVIDIA's Profile Inspector tool to disable rebar as that's going to give you the absolute best performance possible. So that's my look at Oculink versus Thunderbolt. Now, for me, Thunderbolt is still super convenient. And for most people, that should be all that you're going to probably entertain. For me specifically, especially when we take a look at those 5 percentile, 1 percentile FPS, is it kind of kills me inside how big of a difference that makes when we're going to just straight Oculink. I really can't stress enough how much Oculink feels like a full desktop. It is alarmingly good. I realize that it is not for everyone. If you feel like that's an avenue that you want to travel down, please, again, in the description field below will be the GPD Discord. There you're going to want to talk to Hand Talker, and he is trying to create a kit for you guys that he's trying to get gauge on how many people are interested in it, and this is going to be his one doc solution which is again, super elegant. But again, the only thing for me is I wish that there could be an easier way to have a bigger power supply attached to that. I would be all for having that you know device. If you could just have like a 4090 sitting on your desk, just like in use, that would be pretty baller. But um, so that's my look at Oculink versus Thunderbolt. For what it's worth, the thing that kills me with Thunderbolt is when we take a look at those five percentile, one percentile FPS, that huge performance drop, but when you're talking about like 40 or 50% differences on 1 percentile and 5 percentile, that's where it really starts to hurt badly. Uh, and even if we're talking about, let's say it's just 30%, a 30% loss is still painful to me, especially if we start thinking about you're going to be buying more expensive GPUs and you think of losing 30% of $1,700. So for me, that's not really worth it. So if you were entertaining the idea of wanting to go down the Oculink route, Again, it's not for everybody, but if you're interested in it, 
Take a look in the description field below. There's going to be a link to the GBD Discord. You're going to want to talk to Hand Talker there. He is selling different solutions and kits. He's going to probably try to lead you down through the one kit route, or the one dock route, which is actually super elegant. Like how it looks is really dope. So if that's something that you want to entertain, that's going to be your best route to have the easiest way to get on the Oculink train. Looking at Oculink on an eGPU solution is uh, super niche. It's I, it's for <laughs> extreme enthusiasts only, but it is super dope. Uh, it's what I'm going to be using for the foreseeable future. So that's it for this. As always, guys, thank you for your time and thanks for watching.